What is going on guys, it's Echo over here and today I'm going to be going over some terminology within the buy menu. A bit of context of the series I'm going to be doing, um, I have been teaching one of my friends how to play Valorant in CSGO, he's very new to the competitive genre so he doesn't really know much and it means I've had to revisit some stuff that's second nature to me and stuff I just know and is basic to me and explain it to him and sometimes I've missed this and sometimes I've uh, you know, hit the nail on the head. Uh, with this and I feel like I wanted to make a video just going over this sort of stuff So if I ever want to introduce a new friend to it, I can just link them these videos and anybody else that watches um, You are a big help and you can benefit from this too. So the first piece of terminology I'm going to go for is Going to be a full eco. So full eco you pretty much just buy nothing whatsoever the goal is to save as much money as possible uh, eco short for economy it's an economy round to build up your economy um and you know maybe you can get away with buying a cheaper pistol like not the sheriff like these three um if you want um but for the most part you're not going to be buying anything and essentially the goal of this round is to do as much damage to the enemy team as possible any kills that you get will damage the enemy economy while improving yours because maybe you take that gun into the next round or you just get the money from killing them and essentially what this does is it, it limits the deficit that your team's at so um, for example you don't want to be losing three rounds after losing the pi uh, after losing the pistol round um, because you get a massive econ economical advantage from winning the pistol round. So if you lose the pistol round, you'll normally go full eco the next round, try and deal as much damage as possible. You can get back into the game um, quicker rather than waiting the extra round. And essentially, and if you win this uh, round as well, it puts you a better economical advantage. And it will also put the enemy team normally at like a two round deficit if they've, um, if it's just after the pistol round that is. But there, yeah, that's essentially what the aim of uh, this round is. So moving on, we're going to go into a force buy. So a force buy, you will buy whatever your money allows you. So in most cases, again, in the context of after losing a pistol round, you'll probably be able to afford a stinger, some light armor, and possibly a couple abilities. And essentially what this is, is it makes your loadout and the enemy team's loadout uh, as similar as possible. So you have a, as good of a chance as possible at winning the next round. And the reward of this is you'll normally set the enemy team back uh, two rounds, whereas you'll win and you'll have a better economical advantage over your and uh, over the enemy team. Um, the risk of this is you are setting yourself back another two rounds, essentially, in the economy if you lose this. So, again, like I said, um, if you lose a pistol round, you normally lose for around two to three rounds. If you force buy after losing that, you, uh, you will have no economy again and essentially you'll reset that two to three rounds and you'll probably lose a few more rounds okay so that is a uh, force buy so after that I'm gonna go to a anti-eco so an anti-eco is essentially a loadout that you'll buy in order to counter an e eco round um, so again most of these are in the context of like after pistol round because it's like the easiest context to explain when to use them um, if you win a pistol round, you might have enough money for a Phantom or a Vandal or full armor, blah blah. But there's no point um, in buying those since you're going up against pistols. So, a light shield will stop you getting one hit by a ghost. Not a sheriff, but a sheriff can one hit a heavy shield. Um, but like a ghost, and uh, I mean, they have to shoot you more on the body to kill you. And the Spectre is a massive upgrade on a pistol since you can just spam it like that and get a kill. Um, Again, it's putting you at an advantage over the enemy team, but not putting you at too much of an advantage. Because if you spend all on a Phantom or a Vandal on one of these rounds and then die with the gun, you aren't going to have much economy for the next round. And you're going to be in sort of an eco state yourself, so there's no point. It's self-jeopardizing for the most part. A lot of people will. So say you play a support and you play back on the side, you don't really play close up. Um, you might buy a Vandal or a Phantom because you're playing pretty safe. Um, <clears throat> Also, these loadouts are good if the enemy team force by because although you will be at a closer sort of economy level than if you were to buy rifles, um, you'll still got a slight advantage. And if you lose the round, you won't lose it too much, and you won't be in that two to three round deficit that uh, we spoke about prior. Okay, so after that, <clears throat> I'm going to go into a full buy. So a full buy is pretty much buy everything you need. So I'm not going to say every, everything possible because you won't necessarily need 
a banging pistol or every single ability because some characters don't need certain abilities because um, they're very situational and you might not like using them. So just Brimstone's rapid fire zone, you probably don't need that most rounds. Um, but essentially you'll buy heavy armor if you want an operator and you can afford an operator, get an operator. If you want a vandal, get a vandal. Um, essentially what this does is it's the best loadout possible, gives you the most, uh, the, higher likely, the highest likelihood of winning the round out of any of the buys since you have sort of like, like again, you have the best loadout. Uh, this is pretty self-explanatory if you can afford it um, and it's not going to put you at too much of a disadvantage. Normally a good rule of thumb is like if you can afford at least a um, anti-eco or at least like a rifle armor and some abilities next round that's when you really want to go for a full buy um since you don't want to go for a full buy too soon otherwise you'll have no money left and you'll be kind of left in the dark and you'll lose rounds so that is all i can really think of in terms of um the different terminologies and the different types of buys within the game i may have missed some but at least at a beginner level these are the ones that you'll want to know and oh actually no there is one that i forgot and that is a dry buy so a dry buy is essentially where you can it's essentially an advancement and a riskier kind of force buy it's where you can afford rifles but can't necessarily afford abilities so you'll buy rifles armor but you won't buy any abilities and it makes it harder to execute a site but it gives you more of a chance of winning gunning fights um, so it's you get a higher reward, um, but it's also a higher risk than a um, a force buy. So yeah, there you go. They are that is all of the um, different pieces of terminology I can think of. And again, at least for a beginner level, these are all the ones you need to know in the buy menu. I've tried to give some context to each buy, um, but at least now if somebody on your team tells you to maybe eco or force buy or something like that um, then you'll know what to do and hope you guys enjoyed this video see you in the next one bye